Hello. Sorry for starting one minute late. I guess it's fine. Welcome all uh, zero viewers right now. Hopefully some people who followed will be joining. Like in a few minutes or something. While uh, nobody joins I'm just gonna try to advertise the stream a little bit. Hello. Oh, I actually do have viewers. It's showing to me as zero viewers. But clearly, we have Camila and uh, Federa in the chat. So, I don't know, I guess my viewer count is just lying to me. And I can't trust it. Yesterday, we had uh, around 10 viewers, according to my my view counter. But um, now it's just not showing up to me. But anyway. We just got started and uh, stream to whoever is around and if nobody's around then it's fine. But if you are around, say hi in the chat because I can't see how many people there are. And it's better to know that I'm streaming to someone rather than to no one, I guess. Hopefully my microphone is louder today, but not too loud. Let me know if uh, the audio levels are wrong for some reason, like if music is too loud or something. But anyway, the idea is the same as yesterday. We're gonna do like half an hour of Latin and then half an hour of uh, Roman history. So last time we were here Julius in Lectica est inter Ursum et Davum so Julius is in the, the litter between I imagine and means Ursum et Davum who are the two slaves um, Ursus est ante Iulium uh, Davus post eum est So Ursus is in front of Iulius and Davus is behind maybe it's the opposite let's check the art no, Ursus is in front so Ante is in front. We can add that to the list. Oh hey, more viewers, welcome. My uh Welcome everyone. My my thing says that there's five viewers right now. Ante is in front. But I can't trust it because can't be trusted. Um Anyway, and behind was uh, post. Say hi in the chat, everyone. So, post 
is behind. Plant in front was behind, sure. Um, Sirius et Leander non ante lecticum, said the post lecticum ambulant. So s the other two slaves, Sirius and Leander, are not in front of the litter, but uh, behind the litter they walk. Um, Venitne Julius Avila. Mm. Hey, someone said hi. Oh, it's you again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, so, Venitne is something about uh, coming to the villa. Or arriving. Um, I'm not sure. Venitne Julius a villa, non a villa venit. Onde venit Julius ab opido venit. So this is where he's coming from, right? Yeah. So is this Julius coming from the villa? So I, in the sense, is from Nona Villa Venit. He doesn't come from the villa. Unde Venit Iulius. Where uh, does Iulius come from? Ab Opido Venit. From the city he comes. Quo it Iulius. Ad Villam it it. So Um, Quo it Julius is where is Julius going? And this is to the villa he goes. Post eum tusculum est ante eum est villa. So in front of him uh, is Tusculum. And uh, no, I forgot which one is no behind. Post is behind. Oh, this is confusing because both of them sound like in front to me, don't they? To you, like post, post is after, right? So it sounds like in front. I don't know, it just sounds like that to me, but I guess it is wrong. So behind him is the city of Tusculum, and uh, in front of him is the villa. Um, Julius Solus non est. Nam quator servi apud eum sunt. So Julius is not alone, uh, but num nam i uh, i haven't seen this word i believe but it sounds like four sure so Yulus isn't alone for four slaves uh with apud with him are so far slaves are with him. Sometimes I translate the words uh, like uh, word by word and uh, it may sound a bit confusing but I guess it's better to translate word by word and then you can get the meaning. Anyway, medus non est apud dominum. Nam is dominum iratum timet. Okay, so there's some new stuff here. Um, medus non est apud dominum. So Medus, wi who is another slave, I think, is not with uh, the master. For is dominum iratum timet. 
teammate. It's funny how there's no thing here, but I guess this is with him. Teammate. Sometimes let's translate Apud as among. Uh, yeah, sounds right. As here it says Apud Eum Sunt is the same as Cum Eum Sunt, which is with or uh, among. Is this correct? Um, so Timeo is fearing. I didn't remember this. If I knew it, but it's like fear, afraid, and um, here it says that nam is dominum iratum timet. But here it's angry, right? Yeah, Yadung is angry. So for I mean the domin the the master is angry and the the slave is afraid, but I'm not sure exactly how these words fit together in the sentence. Nam is dominoeratum timet. Oh, because he fears the uh, angry master. So this is like. This is an adjective. I guess. I think this is this is like literally the angry master. He's afraid of the angry master. But I'm not sure if that's really an adjective. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh I have some stuff about the game that I wanna talk about later, but uh, I don't know, I'm not sure myself, so let's let's skip that for when I we do some historical research. The music's kinda low, maybe? Is this better? Or is this too loud? No. Let me know in the chat if the music is too loud, please. Uh, anyway. Medus est malus servus qui nomus domini in saculus suo habit. So Medus, the slave, is a bad slave uh, because I think Queen means because, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm certain I have seen this word before though. What? Which? It's not because it's what or which. I think because it's Quia. Uh, oh, I didn't even realize there was music before you raised it. Yeah, sorry about that. The music gets like really quiet sometimes. Uh, do let me know if it is too quiet, please. Mm. So Medus is a bad slave. Uh, who? Uh, the uh, money from the master in his bag has uh, Dominus servus malus baculo verberat uh, the master um, hit with a with a cane the bad servant or the bad slave Oh, this is the song that gets intense. Here we go. Um, Itaque servimali 
Dominum et baculum eius timent. Itaque. We haven't seen that before. I guess this is quaesand, as in uh, Senatus Populus Que Romanus. But I'm not sure what the Ita means. If I put a Taque here, it's not gonna work, right? Oh, that's the intense song. Um, Ita. In this manner. So. Thus, in a word, so thus and thus, uh, the bad slave uh, fears uh, the master and his staff or his cane. Davus autem bonus servus est. So, autem. Um, autem is here. Autem is equals sed davus. Autem equals sed davus. So, sed is but. So, autem is but. Autumn looks like it's but I'm not sure why there's why it's not autumn equals said but anyway we get I guess that uh, autumn is but but Davos uh, good sir good slave is neque is medum amat uh, and not Neque is medum amat. Is amat love? Yeah, amat is love. Neque is medum amat. I, I understand the, w the words here, but I don't quite get the meaning of the sentence. Neque is medum amat. Um, this is clearly the name of the slave. This is to love. And this is and not. Right? Neque would be and not. So we get the words. Maybe you guys can help me with this. So we have. Um, what is the yes? Maybe that can help us. To go, he, she. Okay, so he, here is he. We have all the words, but I can't quite get the meaning of this. And not, he, Medus, loves. And he doesn't love Medus? Is this it? Like, Davos doesn't love Medus? That seems like a weird sentence. But we'll, we'll just keep keep going with this, so if, because it becomes clear later. Davos amicus medi non est. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't love the guy. Sure. So Davos is not a friend of Medus. Nam servus bonus et servus malus non ami. Aqui, amici. Said enemiki sunt. Um, he's not Medus's love. Mm, I think that's a good guess, but uh, I think Amat is a verb. 
Yeah, it's a verb, so it's about loving. So he doesn't love the guy. Um, Nam servus bonus et servus malus non amici. Well, I always forget what Nam was. I always think of Vietnam. And that's confusing and amusing. Nam is four. I'm gonna write this here. Nam is four, not Vietnam. Um, so for the good slave and the bad slave are not friends but uh, enemies but they're enemies sure um, medus est inimicus davi medus is an enemy of davis ursus autem amicus davi est so Autumn was but, so but Ursus is a friend of Davos. So now we're getting this all these relationships with the slaves. I guess that's that's like realistic. I guess you'd have that. Medus a based a domino suo. Uh, a based a based was absent. So Medus is absent from his master. Esne inopido tusculo. Uh, isn't he in the city of Tusculum? Medus tusculi non est. Medus is not in Tusculum. Neque Rome est Medus. And uh, and not in Rome. Yes. Sed in via Latina inter Romam et Tusculum. So he's but he's in the uh, Via Latina, the road between Rome and Tusculum. But Medus is not with them, right? But uh, which road are these guys on? Is it another road or are they, are they on the same road? We will find out, I guess. Unde venit medus, tusculo venit, neque is ad villam iuli it. So, where does medus come? Uh, he comes to Tusculum and not. Neque is. Uh, I always forget what is means. The small words are tough because they sound like anything. He. Um, he. Um, he goes to the villa. Yuli. So he goes to the house of the master. Quo it medus Romam it. Oh, he doesn't go to the, the villa. So where does he go? He goes to Rome. There we go. That's it. <coughs> Tusculum post eum est. Ante eum est Roma. So Tusculum is behind him and in front of him is Rome. Medus via Latina Tusculum Romum Ambulat. So Medus walks Ambulat de Via Latina uh, from Tusculum to Rome. And it's really interesting how there's how the declensions allow you to skip a few words by using the declensions like like here cool stuff hmm. 
Hmm. Etiam Cornelius amicus Iuli in via Latina est inter Romam et Tusculum. Hmm. I didn't understand the word of that. But we'll figure it out. Uh, do I have Etium? I do. Also. Oh, these are some useless words. So, also Cornelius, a friend of Julius. I'll have to skip the song. I think that's all. I have to give a shower. Have a nice shower, I guess. Yeah, the the history section is gonna start in about ten minutes or so. See you then. Um anyway. So Cornelius, uh, the friend of Julius, is in also in the Via Latina between Rome and Tusculum. Unde venit Cornelius? So where does Cornelius come? Is non Tusculus sed Roma venit? So he comes to Rome. Not, but not at this club. Quo it? Quo it? It is go. Quo probably is where? Where does he go? Um. Oh man, when you said you're learning Latin, you're not kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I'm really learning Latin. And it's really hard as well. Um, so, quo it? Where does he go? Cornelius non Ramos ad Tusculum it. Roma post eum ante eum Tusculum est. So, realm is behind him and in front of him is this column I do text say as I learned as a child and promptly forgot everything I could as soon as I got older oh that's too bad but you still remember something right or did you forget everything Oh, you said you forgot everything. Oh, that's just too bad. Um, uh, welcome to the stream, by the way. Um, remember the basics like the anatomy and not much else. Yeah. I haven't seen anatom anatomy yet. Oh, you mean the, the anatomy of words, not the anatomy of bodies, I guess. And uh, that doesn't sound basic to me, if so, because... Well, I don't know what you mean by anatomy, so... Um, very excited to watch this, as I saw your Reddit posts. It was very intriguing. Thank you. Yeah, cool stuff. Latin Rome and uh, video games. Um, where was I? Yeah, Rome was behind him and in front of him was Tusculum. Cornelius in Equo Est. And here we have an illustration of Cornelius in the horse, which is Equo. And that's how we learned a new word. Equus qui Cornelium vehit pulcher est. So the horse 
which Cornelius uh, the heat wasn't that carry it's not carrying a horse obviously so it can't be carry oh it is carry you'd say it like that in Latin he's carrying a horse oh the horse is carrying him oh that makes more sense <laughs> It's the horse this, that is carrying the guy, not the, the guy that is ca carrying. Yeah, because here, uh, this is in the accusative form. I think that's what it's called. And uh, here is the the subject of the sentence. So the horse is carrying Cornelius, and the horse is pretty, poked, beautiful, pretty. Yeah. Uh, Iulius et Cornelius ad villas suas eunt. So, Iulius and Cornelius are going to their villas. Um, Villa ubi Iulius habitat propetusculum est. So, the villa where Iulius lives is near Tusculum. Uh, where does Cornelius live? Uh, he lives in Tusculum. Okay, so Cornelius lives in Tusculum and Iulius uh, lives near Tusculum. But it's interesting how here you have Tusculum and here you have Tusculi. And I'm sure there's, there's a reason for that. And it's the declensions. But it, I still don't quite get how this works yet. But I'll just keep going with this and uh, I'm sure it will make some sense in uh, 10 years or so. Anyway, we've, I've been streaming for uh, half an hour now, so it's time for the switch to historical research. So the Latin part of the stream is done. Uh, Tusculum is uh, accusative, native singular. Accusative. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you, you, we can check something. Maybe f for the city it's gonna be harder to find, but here we do have like uh, the way the dative's work and stuff, and it's different for every word. Maybe they have the city here. Uh, yeah. So here we have two cases, Tusculum and Tusculi. And uh, Tusculum can be accusative or nominative, singular. And uh, Tusculi is the genitive form. Um, and I'm not sure why the thing is I'm not sure why why re, why this is the genitive form and this is the nominative but um, I don't know I guess it will make sense and I also I have no idea why you have plural for a city like you'd say that the 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 Romes? There's just one Rome. So, there's same for Tusculum, there's just one Tusculum. There's no need for a plural. But I guess... I guess there is. I think for the people... F uh, the people from Tusculum? 
that might make sense. What is 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 he in Latin? So yeah, here we have his he. He lives in Tusculum. Um Okay, we're switching. Enough Latin. We're gonna do some uh, historical research. We're gonna read, continue reading Plutarch, uh, Life of Caesar, that we were doing yesterday. And if you haven't followed yet, please follow the stream. If you want to, of course. Um, I think we read all of this last time. Yeah, so it's time for this part. The Life of Caesar by Plutarch. The first proof he had of the people's goodwill towards him was when he stood for the post of military tribune at the same time as Gaius Popilius and came out above him on the list. Uh, this is something that we're gonna have in uh, Historia Realis for sure, which are the elections and uh, you know the list, the list of winners. It's like it's not gonna be like us in uh, EU Rome. You had like one military tribune, something like that, and in Rome. There were like a bunch of tribunes, I don't even remember how many, but there were a few dozens, I think. And we're gonna have a, a bunch of military tribunes for sure, like the historical number. Will you be doing a Patreon or subscription for how fun this channel f for your game? Uh, yes, that's one idea, actually, that I'm thinking about. I do think that... Uh, I'm gonna have to come a bit further in development of the game before I launch a patron, but I do have the the idea to make a patron sometime, um, and I have some cool ideas for uh, rewards as well. So keep an eye out for that. I think it's gonna be a really cool patron, but uh, it's a few months away. I think, like. A couple months, maybe something like that. I, I'm not sure, honestly, but uh, I really want to do that. Uh, thanks for asking. I, I do Texas. Um, a second and clearer example of their favor appeared when, after the death of his aunt uh, Julia, the wife of Marius, he made a brilliant public speech in praise of her in the forum and was bold enough to display in the funeral procession images of Marius himself. Um, this is an interesting event. I'm not sure how it, this can be represented in, uh, in the game though. It's like when a character dies you get an event, uh, which is gonna be a quick event, like it's a pop-up uh, pop event. So that you know that an, an important character died. But I'm not sure how to interact with that. Like in CK, you get an event that a character died and that's it, right? But it, I think it's cool how, how Caesar... Um, like did something with the event, right? He didn't just, oh, okay, my, my aunt died. Okay. He was like, okay, my aunt died, so I'm gonna do this thing, do this public display and stuff. I think this should be represented somehow, but I'm not sure how this can be done in a quick event. It can be like two choices or something. But um, something has to... Maybe... Hmm. What if there's an event where you can honor people and you can honor dead people. So after someone dies, you create the event to honor someone and you choose from uh, one of the dead ancestors you have. 
Someone in the chat says, so someone died, could you speak out in public and gain favor with one group and lose with another? If you don't publicly grieve, the other group isn't happy. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I guess y you could um, maintain the relationships of the, the, the deceased person. So, you know, the person who died had friends, had enemies, and you can create an event that is about honoring that person after their death and then you you sort of inherit the the friendships and the enemies of the that person i think that would make sense because it's like the friends are going to be like yeah i like that person i'm, I'm gonna like you too and the enemies are gonna be like oh you're honoring someone i hated that's what i would imagine it would have to increase relations, at least with the immediate family members. Yeah, unless the the family members hate that person, because uh, there's that as well, right? Uh, sometimes your close family members hate you, <laughs> I guess. And that happened in Rome, so that should be reflected somehow. Anyway. Uh, interesting. I think this is going to be an interesting event to explore. Honoring people, honoring uh, both the dead people and the living people. I'm going to write that down actually. So I don't forget. And I think it can be a it can't be a pop-up event. It has to be uh, timeline event, a longer timeline event, like the ones that are gonna be the, the essence of my, of my game. Anyway, this had not been since the time that Sulla came into power, Marius and his friends having been branded as public enemies. On this occasion, there were some who shouted out against Caesar for, for what he had done, but the people shouted them down in no uncertain manner. They welcomed Caesar with loud, loud, loud applause and showed the greatest admiration for him for having, after such a long time, brought back to Rome, as it were from the dead, the honors due to Marius. Yeah, I think this, uh, this should be in the game. I'm not sure how you're gonna... The part about forbidding images... I don't think that's that's maybe you just have the opposite event, right? You have an event for honoring the dead, and you have an event for desecrating the dead. You can choose. So you're like that would be what Sulla did versus what Caesar did with the image and the memory of Marius. Um, I think those are two good events that complement each other. Uh, it was an ancient Roman tradition to pronounce public speeches at the funerals of elderly women. But it was not the usual thing in the cases of young women, and Caesar was the first to do it. So Julia was young? Marius was quite old uh, when he died. He was like 70 or something so quite surprising that he married a young wife but i guess this shouldn't be surprising in rome um could it be could it be scaled in severity or is love hate only i guess the way the events are gonna work is that the severity is decided by how um, how well you manage to execute it. So unlike uh, paradox events where you either did it or didn't do it, like when you, I don't know, when you pass a law or you, um, I don't know, most events in the, like when you, invite people to a feast it's like 
Okay, you're getting that that event. But there's no... As you said, there's no scale. But in Historia Realis, in my game, you're gonna have a scale for sure, because how successful the event was depends on how much effort the characters put into it over time, and also if they had effort against it. So they have to overcome the their enemies in that as well. So, for example, if I create an event to honor a dead aunt and I put five efforts into it, like five, and then my my enemies see that event, see that I'm honoring her, and they put like four effort against me, like to to smear my aunt's image. Then that the result is that uh, the event was successful, but very very low success, just one, because that's five minus four. But if I put like ten effort into it and my opponents put a one. Then it's going to be a very success, uh, successful event at uh, nine success, and that's going to have a different uh, outcome in the game. Uh, hi, uh, Furunzisku. Uh, he's asking if he, he can get a copy of the game. There's no alpha available yet, but if you sign up at uh, historiarealis.com you're gonna get that when it does come. And uh there Guru96 says hey hey hello how are you? Um so anyway we learned that Julia was young and this was also an action which made him popular. It brought him much sympathy from the people who regarded him as a tender hearted man full of feeling and liked him for it. Okay, I don't I don't think we can use this exactly. It's just uh, it's built into the system that I was describing before. Thanks for uh, linking that, I do Texas. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for signing up and uh, thanks for watching the stream. The alpha is coming. Uh, I'm not sure when. But um, I've been working on the game. I was working on uh, some programming stuff today, like optimizing the the uh, simulation so that I can run hundreds of characters. And uh, I, I've I think I've got a I've got it down pretty good. Like running a thousand characters. 2,000 characters with no lag that's working pretty good it's gonna get harder as I add more stuff because the simulation gets heavier but I think I have a pretty good uh, solid basis for that you look like you need a chocolate chip cookie cake ice drink yeah okay anyway uh, the office coming pretty pretty nicely Agro Crusader followed. Oh, nice! We have the follow animation too. Thanks for following, uh, Argo Crusader. Welcome. Um. So where were we? Yeah, Caesar being tender-hearted. So, after the funeral of his wife, he went out of Spain as quaestor to one of the praetors called Vetus. So, Caesar was elected quaestor, which was which is like a really good. And this is something that I was uh, working on today. Actually, I was. Uh, basically working on how the election events are gonna work which is how they unite all of Rome for the elections you're basically competing against uh, these hundreds of characters who are also 
who also wants to be Quasar, right? So the elections are really hard. And the elections were li really hard in Rome. Um, because being a Quasar was... In a way, it, it was the first step in the Cursus Honorum. I wasn't literally the first because I guess you could be elected, elected military tribune as Caesar was. But being Quaestor made you a senator um, after your uh, term as Quaestor. Like you were eligible for the Senate. If the censors added your name to the list of senators you were in, and you were in for life, unless, of course, the censors kicked you out of the Senate for some reason, which happened historically. But being elected Quaestor is like really huge. It's not something that every Roman could do. But anyway, Caesar was elected uh, Quaestor, and the Quaestors usually served under uh, more senior magistrates, such as the Praetors. So this was a higher office. This is the one before, um, oh god, I selected too much stuff. Anyway, Praetor is the one before Consul, and he served under this guy, the, the Praetor called Vetus. Um, I don't know what, what, what you're talking about, the cookies there, man. So if we are elected censor, how powerful would that be? Yeah. Um, that's a good council. That's a good question. Sorry, <laughs> I read council in the chat. Uh, the censors were not as powerful as the consuls because the consul was the most powerful office. But being censor was still like really good, like a really powerful thing because he could kick your enemies out of the Senate and uh, appoint your friends. But by the time you became censor, you were probably old and you... Because to become a censor you had to be a consul first, so you already had your time, right? You, you reach the top, you are getting older, uh, you're too old for war, so if you're a censor, you're like, um, you're gonna serve the Republic. That was the, the idea, basically. Of course, this, this didn't always go well. But um, the, the censor was there to well, do the census of the citizens to make sure elections uh, were held right, because elections were based on... Uh, um, land ownership and property ownership S and uh, you also handle the Senate like who were the senators that was up for the censors to decide um, anyway He always had the greatest respect for Vitus, and gave his son the appointment of Quaestor under him. When he, in his turn, became Praetor, I didn't uh, really um, know this. Actually, this is new to me, and this is a uh, part of the uh, patronage system in Rome. Like this, this Vitus guy was Caesar's patron, and eventually uh, the son of Vitus became uh, Caesar's client, which was like the, the vassal uh, relationship in uh, medieval times. So when he had completed his service in this post, which was one or two years, depending on the if it was extended or not, he married Pompeia as his third wife. Jesus, his third wife? I don't think we've... We've seen all of that. Like, Plutarch skipped some stuff here. He didn't mention the... 
all of the divorces or deaths, I don't know. But I can like read about this later. Anyway. By Cornelia he had a daughter who was afterwards married to Pompey the Great. So this was his first wife, right? <clears throat> he spent money recklessly. This is a very known feature of Caesar. Like being in debt and spending a lot of money. And many people th thought that he was purchasing a moment's brief fame at an enormous price, whereas in reality he was buying the greatest place in the world at inconsiderable expense. We are told, for instance, that before entering upon public office he had uh, 1,300 talents in debt. Um, then, on being appointed creator of the Appian Way, in addition to the official allowance, he spent vast sums of his own money on it. Uh, what? Oh, in, the, in addition to the official allowance, he spent vast sums of his own money on it. And when his, he was Italy, he provided a show of 320 pairs of gladiators fighting in single combat, uh, this is interesting about how the Aediles had the responsibility of uh, doing the uh, gladiator combats and races and festivals. It was very important uh, public office and it was the the office right after Quaestor in the Cursus Honorum. And uh, what with this and all the other lavish expenditure on theatrical performances, processions and public banquets, he threw into the shade all attempts at winning distinction in this way that he had been made by previous holders of the office. Yeah, this is very common. The Edilis would always try to one-up the previous ones. So they try to um, become popular by spending a lot of money. This is not being highlighted. There you go. What start date are you planning to use? Um, I think I was thinking about uh, around 300 BC because that's when uh, uh, Roman expansion uh, really began. I guess it began before that, but. At 300 BC, Rome was still like pretty much a city and a few territories in Italy, and then it really blew up in the following centuries with the Punic Wars and Macedonia stuff like that. But again, the focus of my game is not military expansion, so I think uh, this is not as relevant as uh, as it was in. Um, uh, Rome Total War, or EU Rome, or how it's gonna be an Imperator, it's gonna be like 300 BC. So, I think that's, I think it's a good date, 300 BC, but I'm thinking of not making that the, the focus, like, I think it's not, a, it's not a, even gonna be the first start date that I, that I attempt. I think I'm gonna start with, um, with Caesar's time and uh, like a young Caesar start like a uh, civil war between Marius and Sulla which is like the first century BC but I'm not sure yet I'm, I'm, uh, I'm more interested in that right now like Sulla, Marius and Caesar, those characters you know, Cicero, um, Pompey, Crassus, the Triumvirate Nice, so we get to see Lusitania. Well, 
Um, maybe? I'm not sure how the Roman provinces were divided in uh, Portugal at the time. But yeah, the focus is not the map. Like, the focus is gonna be on Rome and uh, political intrigue in Rome. But, um, uh, just to finish this, the result was to make the people so favorably disposed towards him that every man among them was trying to find new offices and new honors to bestow upon him in return for what he had done. Yeah, that's the, uh, the basic way that the Romans got popular, right? And that's gonna be in the game. Like, using your offices to create events that help you further your career. I meant tribal nation. Uh, probably not, to be honest. The maybe I don't know. It's not the. This is definitely not the focus. You're not going to be able to play as a tribal nation for sure. You're only going to play as Roman characters in uh, historical realities. But um, maybe they'll do like there'll be a. a tribe that shows up to fight Rome. That's possible. I know it's in Abel Wars, but how would they work li like in CK2? Uh, the tribes are just gonna be threats to Rome. The tribes are not gonna have like their characters and their simulation. It's gonna be way more uh, streamlined than uh, than that. The only nation that's gonna have simulated characters and a, like an actual complex dynamic is gonna be Rome. Uh, I think we've done enough reading for today, so if you guys have any questions, more questions about the game, please feel free to ask. Um, and tomorrow, at the same time, um, I'm gonna stream again, hopefully. Uh, maybe, I, I might start a little bit later tomorrow, but uh, we'll see about that. If you wanna um, get notified when I stream again, just follow the stream, that's like the easiest way. I misspoke before, how would wars work? Would it be like in CK2? No. The wars are gonna be fought very differently. Um, because you're not gonna move units in a map. It's gonna be more like uh, the characters are, are gonna join the wars. So it's a bit like, uh, like the crusade contribution in CK2. Uh, you know, uh, the characters decide to join the crusade, they make a contribution, and whoever makes the most contribution gets the highest reward. They reworked that, the the crusade system now. I, I haven't actually played the new, the new crusade system, but um, it's the essence is the same, right? Uh, the characters make contributions to the war, and that's how it's going to be in uh, history realis. Because there's no map to move troops around, so characters are, are like gonna contribute their martial ability, they're gonna contribute their clients, like their their vessels in the Roman patronage system. You'd call the, the vessels clients in Rome. And basically they're gonna contribute with uh, this this stuff. And uh, whoever contributes more for more time will be like will receive recognition. So for example, how do you decide who gets a triumph for the war? Right? Because in Rome triumph is a war very important. Like you win a big war, someone's gonna get a triumph and it's it's just one general that's gonna get that triumph. It's uh, uh it's a very individualistic uh approach that the Romans had. 
and it, it caused a lot of trouble to Rome, like how how generals would um, do some crazy stuff for this triumphs. But anyway, the character that got the triumph was the character who contributed the most for for the war. So uh, this contribution is going to be calculated through martial ability, um, clients provided for the war, maybe money, stuff like that, and the time, of course, because if you get near the end, then you're gonna have to make a huge contribution to, surpla to surpass people that have been fighting the war for years. And uh, yeah, the wars are gonna be like Kind of like that. They're gonna, they're gonna be events like the Crusades and CK2 where characters contribute uh, effort to the war. Any more questions? Would I be able to pull a Sulla and march in Rome? Apologies for the questions. No, please do ask the questions. I, I do like re uh, replying to them. S uh, they do help me think about the game as well. So, yes, you would be able to uh, start a civil war against Rome. And that's gonna be like end game stuff, right? That's how you you win the game, kind of if that's that's how it turns out but yeah you you start a civil war you you're basically starting a war against rome and uh you're gonna have to fight all the other characters so everyone who is not your friend is gonna make uh contributions against you in the war and you're gonna have to you're gonna need to have more martial ability and more clients than they do to win that war but yeah it should be possible it's just gonna be like f very hard late game stuff which makes sense right because it wasn't just anyone who could do this like uh, Sulla did it Marius uh, did it during this time as well and then Caesar did it so that's like hard hard to pull off. It's gonna be a rare rare thing. I I hope the AI gets to do that sometime, but I guess it's gonna be mostly the player who's gonna be able to pull up, pull it off. Any more questions? No questions? Okay guys, I guess that's it then. Thanks for watching the stream. Um, please follow if you haven't already and uh, I'll keep you updated about the game and everything on, the, on all of the channels that we have. So that's Twitter Historia Realis, um, the website historiarealis.com, which is in the the screen, like on the bottom. Oops, it's that side. Make my, my camera is mirrored, so it just gets very confusing to point stuff. And anyway, the website is there. You guys know it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, good night.